Good morning and welcome. Welcome to your Yoga Solutions live broadcast on this sunny Tuesday, 21st of April 2020. I hope you're having a nice time wherever you are. I hope you're well and uh, surviving these strange times okay. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, I've, uh, I'm I'm still very busy, uh, and um, I, I enjoy, you know, I enjoy being busy. I certainly do. I enjoy having lots to do. I enjoy being creative. Um, but there's something around this spaciousness um, that is making it totally possible. I, I don't feel my busyness to be as frantic as uh, it has been at other times, and. Um, Yes, it's, um, it's a strange old world at the moment. But yeah, I have to confess, I'm, I'm kind of enjoying myself. Um, and and it's, not, it's not just the busyness, you know, it's... Um, I, I, I feel like uh, there's... Um, I, I did a little post on this uh, as, a, as a sort of preamble to my um, British Bill CPD workshop next Saturday um, around um, change of mind transform practice um, it was um, yeah there's it feels like it's it's a time where everyone's kind of getting a bit real which suits me down to the ground I I, I, I love it I love this sort of people being themselves a bit more um, they're, they're, and it's because there's there's uh, all the usual sort of um, rat race kind of things have, have have ceased for a bit you know and um yeah and so and what i'm finding is that despite being busy i have more time i have more time for practice i have more time uh when i when i feel like doing something physical uh, you know something um Farish and and uh, hardcore i go and i go i dig out abigail's garden for her to get Rid of the um, the weeds and stuff, and uh, yeah, I, I just feel like I've got so much space, and yet I'm doing more than I've ever done in my life. I think so. That's where I'm at. Um, so uh, yes, I hope I hope you're making the most of this opportunity because I, th I think it is an opportunity to to get into who we really are um, through. And, and my idea of who we really are is less to do with the personality, less to do with, you know, uh, what, uh, judgments and all the rest of it, and more to do with the, the, the through the body. Um, I've got this idea that uh, the body is innocent, or was innocent, and, um, you know, all the various complications and aches and pains that we develop as we get older are, are more to do with the way we relate to life than, <clears throat> than uh, the body going wrong. Although, of course it does, you know, we get old and die eventually. But um, the, the, um, what my work seems to have uncovered is this direct relationship between um, things. And... Um, yeah, so, so now, you know, now is a really good time to get kind to the body. And, um, and what I've observed through practice is if you actually land on what kindness really means, which sometimes involves a lot of effort, you know, um, sometimes not, sometimes it involves stopping and doing nothing. Um, but it, it, it's a it's a dynamic. It's a relationship. It's not it's not a, it's not an exercise. <laughs> um, and and if you if you get into this kind of uh, kindness to your own body by learning how to listen to it, you get closer to who you are without these internal kind of complications and and, and fights with yourself. Uh, that, that's, uh, I'm talking about myself, I'm not, I'm not preaching, you know, I'm not preaching to you. I'm just saying what, what seems to work for me and um, those that turn up to work, with, to work with me seem to have similar outcomes and um, I think it's because we're all human beings. It, it might be 
that the people that turn up are of a similar mind, I don't know. But um, what seems to happen is we get in touch with a kind of version of ourselves, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, now's the time. Make, make the most of this time. It, it will be over before you know it. And then when we're back to being busy, we'll, we'll all be missing the time that we had, you know? So, um, yeah, so it, it, my, my volume seems about a bit loud at the moment. I hope it's not um, overly distorted. I might turn it down a little. Let's see. Yeah, what I was um, thinking of doing today, uh, one second, that, mm, is that any better? That, look, that looks more like it, so a bit less background noise. Okay, so, um, yes, I, uh, last time I looked, and uh, I, can only, I, can, I can only look on the uh, Facebook page up to 10 minutes before I start, and, uh, uh, yes, uh, last time I looked, I didn't have any questions. Um, if, if you want something answered directly uh, on these sessions, can, you know, when you see the um, scheduled live, do feel free to uh, put put a request or a comment in the in the comments or directly underneath it, and then I then I know then that gives me a subject, and um, I'm quite happy to. You know, it's been my preferred way of um, teaching is people giving me things that they're interested in. Um, these days, I'm, I'm actually getting more into just sharing what I've got going on with people because uh, it seems to be enjoyed very much, um, and that's very satisfying in itself. But um, yes, last time I looked, um, I didn't have any questions, so I'm going to do my own thing today. And what my own thing is, um, well, this morning it's it's pranayama, actually. Uh, I've been um, compiling. Um, well, I've been putting together a, a, a comprehensive online course, a recorded version, and um, being Mr. Authentic, uh, I, I'm, I'm so I'm quite um, uh, precise about it. So it's taken me a while to put together. No, I really don't, don't want to put any recorded misinformation out there. So, so um, yes, and it's um, and it's coming on nicely. It's going to be a fantastic course. It's kind of intermediate level. It covers um, all the fundamental pranayamas that um, I work, have worked with and work with that um, I feel make a proper difference to life, you know. And um, yes, I'm working on that. Um, and uh, the one I was playing with this morning was um, Nadi Sodana, um, the what's known as alternate nostril breath. Um, uh, Nadi is is your left and right channels, Ida, Ida and Pingala. Um, well, it's not just those. It, uh, Nadi refers to all the channels in the body, but um, uh, Nadi Sadhana. Uh, I always get that pronunciation wrong. I think that's right. Nadi Sadhana uh, is more to do with Ida and Pingala, the 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 left channel, the right channel, and um, it's. It, the nostrils are involved. It's, it's you know it's described as alternate nostril breathing. Um, the nostrils are involved because they're part of each channel. Uh, but I'm less obsessed with it being about the nostrils. Um, uh, so uh, if if you're interested in that, um, well even if you're not, I'm going to I'm going to have a go at sharing that with you. So and sharing my particular take on it. So um, let's get a slightly broader view. There we are. So uh, first off, um, just uh, uh, if you if you close off uh, your your left nostril, and um, traditionally you do it with your with a finger on your third eye, and then you use your little finger to close off your left, and your thumb to close off your right. Um, there, there's something in that in that you can kind of uh, lean your head on your finger, and and uh, then the effort of supporting your head can come back and support your shoulder. So, so there's a way of doing it, but, but what's um, awful is if you're just holding your arm up and being tense, you know? 
So if you need, if you're using the touch for support, then it's um, it's more it's better. Um, this part I, I don't normally bother with, but it's um, it's worth just checking in. And we'll do a very simple version where you uh, use the little finger side of things to close off the left left nostril, and you inhale and you inhale through the right. Now, when you when you inhale, rather than sniffing, so you not that um, you um, you take the breath resonating in the throat like you would in ujjayi. So. You get a sort of sighing sound as the breath comes in, and that uh, and that um, uh, kind of bypasses the nostril already. And then you pause. Um, you swap sides, so the thumb you turn and the thumb closes off the right, and then you let the breath go down the um, out of the left nostril. Again, you're not just blowing your nose. You're not. You know, but it's a, a sighing breath, sighing release. And then you inhale through the left. You pause, you swap over, and you exhale through the right. And um, <clears throat> you keep doing that until uh, your nostrils <laughs> are, or, 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 until the breath is equally free to arrive and leave on both sides okay that's the that's the the uh, ba baseline practice um <clears throat> if um even if your nostrils aren't perfectly even um i prefer my own version which is more to do with breathing the channels, the, the whole of the sidedness of the body. Um, for me, this brings it into much more to do with um, daily life because um, it joins in with the way we move, the sidedness of how we move, and we need those things to be even. You know, most people, if, the, if you're right-handed, you'll be heavier on your right, right hand side because it's more responsive you know it takes more weight so you tend to land more heavily on your right hand side than your left but for most people uh, if you're left-handed most likely the other way around and um, this way of inviting the breath to move as if from the base up it involves taking your weight to the right side when you're interested in the right channel and the right nostril and bringing your awareness to the breath on the right nostril is probably enough. Um, it is for me, and uh, takes out the, out the complication of having how to hold up my arm. You know, um, that thing I gave you was was good. It's a good way of doing it, and you can include that. Um, but I, I would like to take it into um, this is your uh, right channel, uh, Pingala. This is your left channel, Ida. And so if you're breathing up the right hand side, you take a little bit of weight to the right. So you can kind of initiate the breath in, as a release in your base. So you let go of the pelvic floor and you get the sensation of the breath rising through the body. And by the time it gets to the neck, the, the, the side of the head, the the sinus, the, the nostril. It's good to kind of get involved with the space around you in that it's like you're listening out on that side. So just try that now. Take a, take a breath out through the right hand side and at the top of it you're, you're pausing with the breath and you're listening to the bird song. Or you're taking in the smell of roses on that side. And then you take, you transfer over to the left, as in you start getting interested in the other side before you release the breath down to the ground through the, through the this channel. Okay, and then the breath arises from the left up. You pause for a moment in space as you transfer across, sort of listening out and then it swaps and it goes down the right and the side 
you went down, you come up. Okay, so that, that's the idea, and, and and it means that we learn to be supported upright with the inhale, but we also learn how to be supported upright, away from the ground, as we release the breath down. We learn to be supported on the way up, as we engage with space from our touch, and then transferring it across, we have the same spacious relationship that allows us to release the breath down, getting taller as a result. Now, I'm, I'm over-exaggerating the side-to-side -side thing. You don't need to do it as much as I'm showing you. But um, um, essentially, we're learning to be supported by the breath, whether we're breathing in or out, in a sided kind of fashion. And the, the fact that you can be supported up in space, whether you're breathing in or out, breathing in or out, you know, it's a, para it's a paradigm shifter, it's a, it's a game changer. So, let's, um, let's take, let's just uh, take this into a rhythmic practice where I'm talking less, I'm just guiding you more. So relax, make sure you're not holding yourself up with tension in your back. Have a breath that fills your belly to start with. Let it go, so the belly empties. And once you feel sort of settled and not lifting yourself up too much, we can just lean slightly to the right. So you'll feel a little more weight on your right sit bone. Relax across the pelvic floor to receive the breath on that side. And if it's a sighing breath, that ujjayi sound, you can emphasize the kind of the smell on the right hand side. Take it into listening out through the right, even seeing out through the corner of the right eye. And then floating across in space to give it down away from you to the left. Then with the weight on the left, you make sure the pelvic floor is released to allow the breath to arrive with a sigh, feeling it on the left nostril, listening into space through the left side all the way up to your head, and you float across to give it down away from you in space to the right hand side with another sigh. The sighing allows you to lean into the breath, whether you're breathing in or out. Climbs through the right with a deliberate release of tension in your base. Sensing the air passing through the right nostril. Filling all the way to your head, retaining for a moment as you swap sides so that you can release the breath away from you on that side, all the way down to your base. Feeling the opposite, the left nostril, as the breath leaves. If you went down the left, you come up through the left. accompanied by the breath, or you accompany the breath itself. As you join in by being in space, you pause at the top, allowing the energy of the breath to swap over as you swap sides, and then emptying down through the right. Opening your base up through the right, pause, swap sides, being with the left hand side, you let the breath go down away from you. Opening the base so the breath can arise from the left. Pause at the top as you swap sides. Get interested in the space on the other side, on the right. 
and then letting it drop down away from you. Up through the right. Pause. Be in the left. Space. And release down through the left. Out through the out through the left. Pause, swap over, release down through the right. One more round. Up through the right. Pause. Swap over. Empty down through the left. And that's the one we're going to end on. Um, if you're right-handed, um, if you're left-handed, do one more and end on the right, okay? So if it's done its job, um, you'll be feeling a bit more balanced. I feel like I am. I feel, I feel like it, it's made a difference. Um, most of us, uh, unless you're entirely ambidextrous, most of us have a left-right divide. You have a side that um, likes to do more work than the other, and a side that um, really can't be bothered, but <laughs> is likely to be more sensitive. So the side that likes to do the work is going to be less sensitive and possibly less uh, available to your awareness in detail um, but it will be stronger and um, this uh, communication between the left and right side with the intention of making it about the same um, can help get some communication going between the two halves of you and um, you know when we're in ambulation when we're walking we, we have, uh, um, the, the, the treating the body as two halves is the dysfunctional way of, of walking in that you put your heavy on one side and then your heavy on the other side. What we're doing with this is the side that you're giving your attention to, you actually get lighter in space. Um, most people put their weight down and get heavy, you see, so, so the body has to catch its own weight on the opposite side. Whereas if you get light on the side that you're giving your weight to, which is um, something I covered in my proprioceptive online course um, and explored in, in depth, um, then you, you, you're developing this relationship to space through breath that um, isn't this sort of flumping from side to side walk, which kind of tends to happen um, as we get older. Instead, we get a, a cross-diagonal relationship, as in when you're up in space here, on this side, and the weight's on this side, you can quite easily put the weight on the... you can quite easily place the other foot uh, ready to take your weight. And then when you get there, you get tall, you know, you come up. So it, 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 gives, you a, it gives you a sort of a cross-diagonal relationship to the ground that gets you rotating in movement and rotation comes from the thoracic spine generally speaking so we start moving and walking from the heart because the thoracic the center of the thoracic spine is the spine behind the heart and um, for me that's the kind of ideal physical center of action and breath and that sort of thing in, in terms of um, being on this planet. Of course the other centres have um, their importance, their important role, but um, I, I think without the heart as your centre, I think um, my opinion is that we are less than integrated. It, it feels like the heart being the physical centre is much, makes much more sense than um, other things it certainly makes more sense than being in your head because <laughs> uh, 
If, if you could get your centre of gravity there, maybe. But, um, yes, who knows. I'll, I'll let you know when I get there. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, anyway, I hope that was useful. Um, there, there, there are other um, elements to it. There's, there's somewhere else I take it. When, when, when you've got that um, balance, um, and you might have noticed I ended right-handed people down through the left, that that circuit is another breath um, by itself, and it's kind of advised as a version of Ujjayi for, uh, in the books. I think my personal opinion is that um, there's all sorts of sort of ideas around that, uh, around the chakras being um, rotating clockwise, basically. Um, I think that's based on handedness again. I think that um, you know when when you are right-handed, you tend to be heavier on that side. So the breath arising up through the right and going down through the left um, would bring balance to those things. Um, so I'm not convinced that up the right and down the left for Ujjayi is um, the permanent kind of the right way. I think it's appropriate for if you're right-handed. Um, in my experiments, and I can sort of I can embody left-handedness even if I can't do it. <laughs> I kind of know how it, I can imagine how it feels, um, and. In my own experiments, it feels like if you're left-handed, it might be more useful to come up the left and go down the right. Um, either way, Nadi, um, Nadi Sadhana is meant to balance out the choice because you're trying both. You're trying up the right, down the left, up the left, down the right. And if they come into balance, then you know all your chakras are going to be communicating perfectly well. That's the idea, I think. Um, yeah, and, and pranayama is where it's at, really, because um, the way we move is determined by our breathing choices. And our breathing choices are a direct function of how we feel about life and about the situation we find ourselves in. So the way to, you know, ultimately the way to influence our breathing choices is through our own direct action, our direct relationship to earth and space, which is my enviro-somatic idea. Um, but the pranayama gives you a, a chance to test it out directly. And I still include the enviro-somatic thing in that if you're doing it in, inside your own experience without any relationship to this planet, then um, how on earth do you know what you're doing? You know, how, how do you gauge what you're doing apart from with the intellect? And um, it's, the, the mind is, is rife with misinterpretations because it interprets. Whereas you, can, you, can, you know whether you're supported by the breath or not, because you feel supported or you don't. <laughs> And uh, so anyway, that's my thing. So I hope that was useful. Um, I enjoyed it. Um, yes, things coming up this Saturday. I have um, uh, a, CP a British Real CPD workshop. It's an all day, five hours. Um, I thought it was worth five points. I just found out uh, I'm doing one for Yoga Scotland uh, um, in May. And uh, they said five hours is seven points. So, um, uh, so possibly it might be worth seven points, I don't know, you'll have to check with your British wheel rep for that. But uh, uh, this Saturday online, um, four, no, 10 till 4 with an hour's break. Um, and it's called uh, Change Perspective, Transform Practice. And it's um, the, the central theme. Uh, well, the thing I, I'm alluding to is um, one of potentially sutras where he's talking about how uh, movements of the mind that he's describing the various movements of the mind that get in the way of yoga practice basically you know as in yoga happens when the mind stops moving but uh, uh, at other times 
um, there is a way of moving the mind appropriately, but most things, most ways of moving the mind get in the way. And one of the, one of the most commonplace issues I see in yoga practice is the movement of the mind that is referred to by Patanjali as fixed mental impressions. As in, we learn something, and because we've learnt it and it makes sense and it kind of works, we attach to it as reality and we stop learning, we stop being present. We are responding to a fixed mental impression rather than to what is. And um, <clears throat> so I'm, sp I'm spending the day exploring how to um, realise that concept in practice and how, how, to make, uh, how to take advantage of it in that um, if we can notice our, notice our own fixed mental impressions and change our minds, then what happens is directly is, um, is an, in, an entirely different experience of what we do. And uh, just applying ourselves directly to that principle and, and moreover I will be adding how, what, what direction to change our minds to as opposed to... Um, so, uh, so we've got something to uh, point the mind at because the mind will be there <laughs> working out how to practice. And um, so I'll be, I'll be talking about quality of action, quality of touch, quality of engagement and noticing the responses in the body. Anyway, that's a day of that. Um, and if you're, um, well, uh, there's a code uh, that gives you five pounds off as a British Will member, um, which is which is cool. Um, but because I'm I'm actually running the thing and the bookings, I, I I'm happy for anyone to use that code. To be honest, it's um, a J O dash B W Y. And uh, that will give you five pounds off a place. I think there are a couple of interactive places left if you want to join. And with a discount, it's only thirty pounds for the whole day. And um, uh, if uh, and if there's if, if I've run out of live places, interactive places, you can still book a, a what a view only place for twenty five, I think, or twenty pounds. Uh, with a discount. So uh, that's on the website. It's on, on the description underneath here as well, I think, above here. And um, that's this Saturday. What else have I got coming up? Well, uh, it's my classes uh, later on today. I've got one in uh, about half an hour. Um, uh, they're, they're now 75 minute classes, uh, guided sessions for everyone with 15 minutes relaxation included at the end. Um, they're going rather nicely. Um, mostly full of gold members right now because um, gold members get to go to these classes for free. Uh, I've got another one this evening at 6.30 p.m. and another one, a uh, third one tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. And uh, I, I tend to, you know, ask where people are at and then I build a class around that. Um, yeah, and uh, so that's this week. It's Tuesdays, Wednesdays, that's every week mostly um, yeah Saturday the British Wheel uh, workshop uh, the following s oh yes uh, oh no the, you can't join the core intelligence anymore um, that, that's up and running now so um, those of you that have signed up for that that's uh, continuing this Thursday um, following Saturday not, not this weekend coming the one after my Saturday morning retreats are back on, £20 to join live, interactive, £10 uh, view only. Uh, they get booked up rather fast, so I suggest that if you want a place for that, um, go ahead and book for it. It's up, it's up on the website already. Uh, they're very nice sessions, 11 to 1, and they're usually a kind of gentle, they're, they're a kind of a flow session with a theme and deep relaxation at the end, two hours. So that's nice for me. Um, uh, yeah, that'll do. Uh, if you've got any pressing issues with your own body, um, you can book in for a free 15 minutes with me um, on my website. Go to the book online page uh, and uh, classes and one-to-ones are on the, on the same page, but uh, as a category, so you have to scroll across to one-on-ones, one-to-ones. And yeah, you can you can book a free initial consultation. I kind of want to keep it for people that um, haven't had a chance to work with me directly yet. 
So if you if you're a familiar, then don't use that if that's okay. Um, uh, yeah, so you can book in for a free fifteen minutes, and um, you know I, I have given people direct solutions. There was one person with a with a with a bunion joint. I, I gave her an exercise to um, to help uh, bring back function and, and begin the journey back towards a non bunion joint. And someone else um, help with their with their shoulders, and you know it can be done in fifteen minutes if you if uh, if we've got time um, to get there. Um, but at least I can at least give you an idea of what to practice and how to go about it. And then uh, if you want some direct help in, in in how to go about that, then you can book in for a half hour or one hour session. Half hour is um, kind of good if you are already quite familiar with with working with me online uh, <clears throat> just because it because uh, there's usually a bit of faff around um, uh, setting up cameras and knowing where to sit and where to put your mat and all that sort of thing and also getting familiar with my language and how i how i guide you because i can see an awful lot when i'm teaching you one-to-one -one. Um, it, it's not so much the pixels uh, as you say, um, it's 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 uh, what I'm picking up is the is something in the quality of the movement tells me what's going on in the inside of the body, and uh, you know I can do that in a class, and I can do that one to one on screen as well. It's not different. Uh, the only difference is I can't put my hands on, um, which is good. Really uh, means I have to express it in a way that means that you understand. Um, uh, so that you can apply it to yourself, which is kind of more empowering in many ways. So, um, yes, yeah, so if you have anything pressing, then go ahead and book a free 15-minute session and, and uh, we'll get chatting and then see how it goes. Other than that, there's always uh, online courses pre-recorded. Uh, my sensory intelligence courses are all up and ready. Uh, the previous ones, you've got haptic intelligence and proprioceptive intelligence. They're, they're fabulous things. Uh, people get a lot out of working with these things, and if you, <coughs> you still, uh, you can still book those and get your th your three free one to ones with each booking. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll do. And uh, in the meantime, uh, yeah, look out for my pranayama course when it comes. Uh, I'm really quite excited about it. So that's uh, that's me done, I think. Um, yes. So I shall say. Goodbye for now. I shall. I'm Mark J. Aquaviva of the Aquaviva Method, the Enviro-Somatic Approach to Body Work. Signing off. I shall see you same time, same place next week. Much love to you all now. Bye.